So this is Off the Brawl and Off the Ball. I'm Ronan Mullen, joined as ever by Phil Egan and Andy Lee, and this week by a very special guest, Oshin Fagan. Thanks for coming in. Thank you very much. Gail Foss. <laughs> Gail Foss. One of the best Irish boxing nicknames, I would say. Very good, yeah. <laughs> Fair play. Thank you. And uh, how's life? Yeah, things are going well. Yeah, I'm working away within boxing, so boxing has uh, properly saved my life. <laughs> like I'm, uh, I'm delighted I'm working with the, there's a partnership between the DCC and the IABA, and we uh, go around different schools and some disadvantaged areas, and we uh, we teach them the basics, and then we have a we have a kind of a, uh, a it's a thirteen week course. We we do uh, four weeks of bronze, four weeks of silver, four weeks of gold, and then a showcase at the end for them to show us, show us, show off their skills, you know, in yes. the in the national stadium. So it's a it's a great incentive for them to keep on working hard, you know, and they'll actually get to get to fight in the in the ring. That like uh, Andy won his. His, his fights and, and uh, I won my Irish title there and uh, it's just a, a great experience for, for the kids you know for uh, 10, 11, 12 you know great old times. How many of them keep going then after that? But that's, that's, our, that's our remit like we're supposed to be pushing pushing kids in, into boxing but once they're doing something we're happy enough you know yeah. so uh, that's uh, but uh, I'd say See, at the start, say a, cl a class would start, and so you wouldn't have had to have any any uh, um, experience at all. And then you s then you begin to see people dropping off and all that kind of stuff. And obviously, then when it, when it gets a little bit more intense and you're getting punched, we, we in the in the silver in the in the bronze, it's non-contact, so you're touching knees, touching elbows, and then in the in the uh, silver, you're uh, you're you're throwing body shots. And then uh, we, we start to, to de develop shots f to the head then in the, in the gold. And so only the really serious ones then will go to the gold and then get a, get a shot at the showcase finally, you know. But it's great, great experience for them all. And in terms <coughs> of your own beginnings in boxing, you would have been quite a late blamer, like football would have been your first love, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't put on a pair of gloves at all, like for, like I, I was... I, football was my first love, like millions of others. I wanted to be a professional footballer, you know. And uh, what position? I pl I played on the on the wing and up front for most of my my, my childhood schoolboy days. But uh, when I I went over on the football scholarship when I was twenty four, and I put they put me in the centre midfield, and that that was kind of the, the way I liked it then. Yeah. I liked the rough and ready then, you know. So I uh, yeah so. Ended up, I was quite old going over on my on my scholarship too. Like so, I was twenty four going on the scholarship, and uh, and then Oklahoma. Uh, it was Oklahoma, yeah. And um, it was a it was it was weird at the start because it was a uh, we <coughs> we ended up uh, we started off with a uh, three weeks before the the main uh, the, the the season started, and he had us really really training hard. So we were training three times a day, and uh, the first the f the first them. Um, <clears throat> training session would be you'd have to run your f five miles in under 25 minutes or something like that <coughs> excuse me and then um, and that was tough enough and then we'd come out and do our main skills skills training for a couple of hours and after that and then the the last session then would be a would be a swim at night or something like that but uh, we were doing that for like for 20 days in a row and it was it was pretty tough and you could see you could see all the all the footballers on campus because they're the ones with the limbs going <laughs> going around you know but uh the the coach then said, said to me he says uh, oh, tell you what Fagan bring bring the because uh, he was the oldest he made me the captain you know I think and uh, he says bring the lads uh, to uh, Tyler's house for a for a party you know and I was going you sure I says uh, yeah and I was going like <laughs> when I told the lads uh, <laughs> it was funny because I you wouldn't have thought you could see grown men cry he was going oh we've got a day off we've got a day off you know so I end up bringing, but, but he, he prefaced then, he says, um, to them, but whatever you do, don't invite the baseball players. I was going, what do you mean? What do you mean? And uh, he says, yeah, no, the baseball players just don't get on with footballers. I was going, I just thought that was a ridiculous notion, so I just invited everybody anyway. So I end up going to, um, going to the party, and the party was great. Uh, it was a farmhouse, and there was just a couple of kegs, and in the in the in the ke in the within the kegs of that the just Coors Light or Bud Light or something like that, and so the the lads were just plonked up and just taking taking the taking the drinks, you know, and of course the um, the uh, baseball players did turn our baseball players turned up, and uh, we saw one one fe one fellow coming around. All like mo most of my team were 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 foreigners, you know, they were, were from Colombia. Um, Italy, England, Ireland, all over the place, probably 13 or 14 different nationalities. And this 
baseball dudes came over and, and I saw him from the corner of my eye I was talking to one of my pals and I uh, saw him in the corner of my eye just pushing somebody and say, saying uh, uh, hey man I'm baseball <laughs> 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 and I was going what and I, 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 twitched, I, I tapped Le- Lexi one of my pals and he said, I said look at this fella He's going around pushing people and saying like, "Hey, he's baseball." And it's just, and we're just looking and having a drink and looking and having a drink. And he went to the next fella and, and did the same. I was going, "This is mad." And uh, Colombian brothers were next. And I was going, "Jeez, <laughs> look, Vizzo, looks like he's coming over to me." I says, "Hold that for a second. He says, "I says, ah, you're baseball. I'm, I'm football." And I'm boxing. Boom! I hit, <laughs> I hit my teeth and over the table and he went right. So, the, <laughs> so, the thing was, uh, so the last then just pulled us all off, pulled us off, and that was the that was the end of that. But like, but the worst thing about it was that then later, later on, right, is what we when we heard uh, some some fella came up to me uh, a couple of days later. He says to me, you know that fella that you punched you the knife face? And I says, yeah. He says, he's after you. I says, well, I'm here all the time. I says, I don't have a car or anything, so I'm just walking. He says, no, you don't understand. Last, last week he had a, he had a, uh, a fight with one of his friends. His, his friend did the dirt on his girlfriend. I was going, okay. And he met him in Walmart and took out a gun and shot him. <laughs> I was going, what? I was going, oh, okay, well, that's, it's, it's a bit different than, like, <laughs> if, if you're just looking for a row or you're going to get shot, you know? But apparently his mother was a, a, cor- a court clerk and told him to get out of there because he was, he was, the, they were after him and stuff like that. So he, he, he left, and the last I heard, he was, he was uh, on the oil rigs in, te- in Texas or something like that. But I never saw him again after that, just as well. <laughs> yeah, well, it's mad. And you mentioned Oklahoma, like it wouldn't be a well-worn path from Dublin to there. No. And it was that famous game, I think I've read about the, um, it was Terry <coughs> Orchard you were playing against mm-hmm. and the man of the match and Leeds were talking about you and yeah. there was a few different scholarships offered. So why did yeah. you end up going there? Well, the, well, what happened was with the with the uh, so I played in the junior cup final uh, against Cherry Orchard and I had a particularly good game. I was playing with Port Marnock at the time. There was we really had one of the best junior sides in the country. Obviously, we were in the final and all that, and I had a really good game. And it was uh, set, uh, they told me uh, or a few newspapers put out a, cu- a couple of uh, things saying that uh, I had uh, one to watch for the future and all this kind of stuff. These were in touch for a, a, a little while, but. I was, I was under the impression that they weren't going to uh, do anything. They, they kept on saying to me, oh, listen, you're, you're, you're 24 now, or 22, I think it was at the time. And he said, you want, you'd, re- you'd really been wanting to make the moves in, uh, in the League of Ireland by, by now if you wanted to have an, any, any chance in, in uh, Ellen Road here, you know. So that was fair. And my dad was always a stickler for, he says, if you, if you have, a, have a trade, you, you won't go hungry kind of thing. And you're always pressing the, the education and all that, you know. I was a bit of a messer in school, and uh, so I, that that just wasn't wasn't going to go well for me, you know. But um, but the older I got, and I was working on uh, working on building sites and that kind of stuff, I just said, oh, it has to be something better than this for me, you know. So and up like uh, the guy from the from Chicago actually got in touch with me first, and he uh, he said to me. Uh, I pl- and I played well. I went over on a trial for a, a team called Lewis University, and this is this is a couple of years before I went on my scholarship, and I did really well. And I thought, oh, this is this is easy. You know, I scored three in my in my um, in my trial game, and uh, and he brought me into the office and the real all decked out and all this. I said, oh, this is what real pros must must feel like, you know. <clears throat> and he says, "Oh, I'm really impressed with your with your play today. Uh, you did the and he's going through all the all the all the plays that he made and all that. It was really professional, <laughs> like you know. I just thought this is a bit mad." And he says, uh, "He says, uh, yeah, we'd like you to come and, and play for us." He's going, oh, "Brilliant, okay. Where's where do we sign?" He says, "You know what? You know, the, for the first year, you'd have to pay five thousand. And I'm going, oh, oh, hold on." I was going, "What?" I says, "I thought I was on the scholarship." He says, "Yeah, but you have to prove your worth for the first year, and then you get full scholarship after that. But this is a three quarter scholarship, so you pay pay five grand this year." I says, "I don't have five grand," and that was it. And so he said, "Now, nice enough he was." And he said, "I'll leave your, uh, I'll leave your stats on the internet." And uh, in the end, that's where the Oklahoma coach came in for me, and, and I was happy with it. But I didn't think that he was going to do all that. But I, I was distraught then, coming home on the plane. And then the <coughs> before <coughs> before we went, 
uh, my pal who was over there already on the scholarship, he said, uh, well, we go out on, on the night. And they, he brought me to this, um, this uh, warehouse party. And this warehouse party, there, there was a couple of kegs in the corner. And there, and <laughs> yeah. There's a pattern. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah but, uh, but I remember them saying something about a keg, a keg stand, and I didn't know what a keg stand was. I saw one fella, kind of a, uh, a weird dude, just, just came up and they, they, they pushed him up. They pushed him up, uh, and he hung onto the the keg like this. And they pushed him up, and they stuck a they stuck a tap on his mouth, and they went one, two, three, four. Right? I was going, this is crazy, right? So I was laughing, you know, I was laughing at the concept of the keg stand because when he got brought down, then he was uh, he got twelve seconds, but that was the record. And he's going, yeah, he's and he was looking at me, laughing at me, he thought I was being rude. I was going, he says, if you think you're so great, why don't you have a go? Like I said, oh, I don't know, I don't, don't. Don't I don't drink that much, you know? He says, uh, he said, oh, you're Irish. Come on, you should you should have a go like this." I'm saying, "Oh no, I don't uh, I don't feel like every cat on going, Ireland, Ireland." <laughs> I wouldn't be one for peer pressure, man. Uh, usually, but I uh, just said, "Ah, oh, come on, sure, might, might as well give it a go." So, have my hands on the keg, push me upside down. And in the space of time that the tap was going, I felt that it was a real, real weak, weak flow. So I stuck my tongue up the up the tap. <laughs> and the next thing I heard was 21, 22, 20. Jesus Christ, the Irishman. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so they put, put me up on, my, on, on their shoulders and said, parade me around because I, <laughs> I then had the record. <laughs> it was mad. It was nuts. But sure, I went home then afterwards and just thought ah, that's, uh, that was a shame because I didn't think anything was coming back off the, off the, uh, the scholarship route at all until, until the guy came in to me uh, for, from Oklahoma. What was the standard uh, of football like over there? Uh, some really, some really good players and some some terrible players as well. And obviously, the terrible players would be on the bench and all that. We had, uh, I had a couple of Kenyan internationals on my team. Uh, uh, Lexi, my English pal, had had a little spot with um, with uh, Arsenal for a little while as he was growing up. Um, Matteo was with uh, Milan for a while. Uh, but this all culminated into, into nothing really, you know. And then, but it, until until we we got the we got the scholarship stuff going, you know. But uh, the and the American dudes, even though they weren't uh, very uh, skillful, they were very very athletic, you Just know. Just to remind people, this is off the ball, not off the off the ball. <laughs> so, and how to tell the story? I, I know the story, but let people know how you got into boxing. Um, how you started. Well, what happened was uh, yeah, it was a, a bit how, of a, how you found yourself in a ring. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a crazy story. Um, I um, I went obviously after my scholarship. Uh, was I, I was delighted with myself because I I uh, I'd been thrown out of school, and so I've, I said, oh, and this is this is back in the day, and so after after all that, and I did my scholarship, and I, was, I had a real uh, I I was proud of myself getting there. Uh, I got degrees in in PE. And in political journalism, and I um, ended up uh, falling hard times, and I I lived out in the back of the in the back of the car for for a little while, and I was now I was still training all the time. And in fact, the training days were the days when I felt warmest because I'm out training and getting warm and all that. Uh, and uh, but I, f- I just felt fell into a bit of depression. I wouldn't have minded, but my my parents, if I had told them. They would have been. They would have said, "Ah, oh, hey, what you need?" You know what I mean. But uh, I was so proud of myself after after going through it all that I didn't want to tell my parents that I was I was going through hard times. You know, so I ended up uh, living in the car for a little bit. Visit, in Oklahoma, you yeah, there, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Visiting friends then and say, and asking asking friends to, uh, uh, and they wouldn't have really known that I was I was I was. Uh, uh, hard, going hard in me look, you know, at, at the time either, uh, because I'd, I'd I'd bounce from one friend to another friend to another friend, and then stay in the car for for a, another night, and not, uh, I just kind of kept on going that way for for a little while, and then uh, I remember talking to one of my Jamaican friends, Alcino, and Alcino said that because we used to do like just to to for extra fitness in the football we used to do a little bit of sparring and stuff like that and that was it was just in front, with all the rest of the football lads you know and uh, he says uh, he says one of my one of my pals is a professional boxer he says uh, but you're better than him like I, we used to spar when we were kids and I was going really I didn't really think anything of it you know uh, but when I was in the car one night I was praying real hard I was going oh, what am I going to do you know uh, and uh, I just and 
after the talk to El Zeno, the next time he says, go down to a boxing club. I, I says, yeah, well, you, you've got that friend's number. Have you, uh, have you got it? He says, no, I don't have his number. He said, but uh, just go to any any boxing club and I'm sure they'll they'll tell you the ropes and maybe get you a fight or something like that. So I just went down to uh, a local boxing club. Uh, it, was, um, it was run by Buck Smith. I don't know, do you remember Buck, do you? Mm-hmm. He, he has the most wins in a row ever. Like I think he's had 167 wins. Now, he fought some great fight fighters like Julio Cesar Chavez Sr. and Antonio Margarita and, uh, and all that. Uh, but he also fought road sweepers, you know what I mean? So he's, he, uh, he, he mixed in the best and the worst of, of everybody. He used to hang around with Sean O'Grady and all. Uh, mm. And so um, uh, I just went down to him and I said, listen, I need, I need, uh, need a few quid. Uh, can you get me a fight? He says, you want to go pro? And he had one of these kind of like Don King kind of attitudes. You know, want to go pro? He's going to throw me in against his best fella and just get him an easy win. I says, well, if it pays, I, yeah, I do want to go pro. I'll, I'll, I'll fight anybody, you know, just uh, if you can give me some, get me some money. And like uh, he said, uh, yeah, I'll put you in against Sheldon. And like Sheldon had like 50 amateur fights and won most of them, you know, at the time. So he was supposed to beat me up. Like he was kind of reminded me of a Tommy Hearns. He was tall and lanky and long fella, you know. And uh, he uh, ended up saying, uh, saying to me, he says, uh, he says, right, you're in against Sheldon. He says, right, okay, I'll fight him. And ended up Sheldon was <laughs> knocking, knocking me around the place because he was just so long, just using his long levers, you know. But he couldn't understand why this mad Irish man kept on coming for him. And I hit him with an overhand right, and I saw his legs buckle, and I just kept on coming in and, and throwing throw punches. Referee came in then and stopped the fight, which is nuts. And I was like, thinking to myself, this is, this is mad. Like, <laughs> just two minutes ago, I was living in the car, you know. And um, walked down towards the dressing room, and uh, a principal of a school came up to me and said, I believe you're a qualified school teacher. I says, yeah, but nobody's messing with my green card. He says, just so happened my PE teacher left in her notes last week. Will you come in for an interview? I was going, just bless myself. I said, yep, I'll be there. So we, we went through the, the normal interview process and all that. And, but I did well. Um, I remember coming out and saying, I think I've got that job. Like, so he says, yeah, you've got that job. He says, uh, he says uh, start in September, you know. So I was just like in the, in the space of, of twenty minutes, like I was a, <laughs> then I was a I was a, a teacher by day and a fighter by night. It's nuts, you know the way it worked out. And that's the, that's the way it worked for me. Weird. Yeah. No, like teaching by day, fighting by night. What was that like? What was that dynamic like? Real. Trying to balance it, and then what was the students? Uh, yeah. Approach to you? <laughs> my my students were were mainly Mexican kids, you know. So all the kids were uh, were were. Were great, were, were great, and they really supported me, and so did their, their families. And also, if I any, ever had a local fight, uh, the kids would would, uh, would come and support as as well as the families. And uh, they uh, they were uh, just just really supportive. Like I I remember I come come in uh, during the day uh, after a hard sparring session the the night before, and they they'd, they'd say, "Oh, Coach Vega was was fighting again." <laughs> <laughs> I was going, oh, I was just sparring lots. So we, were, we used to have a great old laugh with the, with the kids. And about five of my old old students are now professional boxers. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but hey. Yeah. You know where uh, Alex is yeah. No, I don't know. <coughs> he hangs around with Carson Jones you now, Carson, uh, him and Carson now. Uh, uh, he beat Carson so, Jones? No. Cicelo, no. uh, uh, he lost his uh, world title shot there last. Uh, Last he um, was a student of yours. He, nice. he actually used to co- used to come to to uh, the school and all, and, and and come watch me fight and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, he's cool though. And speaking of the Mexican boxing influence, you and Andy have a shared opponent, and Julio mm. uh, Chavez. That's right. Yeah, yeah. What was that like? Oh, that was surreal. Uh, it was a, it was a weird one because uh, I had. Uh, so I, I was fighting in Oklahoma and there was like it was two hundred dollars per fight kind of stuff, you know. And uh you know, I'm not saying that it, it was too much more for for the Chavez fight, but just I, I said to I said to Book, I says, Get get me a big fight, get me something that I can actually I can get me a few quid, you know. And I said, like when I say a few quid, it was about fifteen hundred quid at this at this stage because uh we uh we were both very young in our in our boxing crew, we were kinda of like fledgling uh, pros, so he had won five out of five, and I'd won five out of six at the time, I think. And uh, so just uh, just coming across uh, Vegas in the in the plane, just looking out, and you could see the MGM Grand, and it's just going, like, this is mad because a few months ago this this would have been just uh, a, a crazy thought, you know. So uh, 
went in there and I, I remember um, I remember being pretty confident because I just I just wasn't going to care like that. I just that was my style. I kind of wore my heart in my sleeve, and I knew it was tough and I knew it was fit. I wasn't a good boxer, you know, uh, but I didn't care because it seemed to me that everybody that I'd fought up to then, they they were all better boxers than me. But I always seemed to prevail. Um, uh, in the one fight that I I, I lost uh, in the in the four six, um, oh yeah, got a. I got a head, I got a headbutt and uh, broke five bones in my face, but I, I continued. So I continued fighting, but uh, then so that happened in the first round, and then the last round, the referee looks at me and says, "Too much blood." I said, "There's too much blood in the first round." I was going, "I can't believe after stopping that fight, it was about thirty seconds ago." You know, I was disgusted because I want that be my legacy and never being stopped kind of thing. You know, but yeah, that was that was upsetting though. You know, but the the whole Chavez thing, I thought I thought I'd beat Chavez. Um, I made a silly mistake, and I think it was in the third round. I, I was not. It was only a four round fight. Uh, in the so I, was, I knocked him around for the first and second round. Third round was going the same vein, and then I threw a silly uppercut from outside, and he tagged me with a, a right hand. And my hand touched the ground. And sure, it was up before the referee even called one, and. Uh, but that changed changed the the score to a ten eight round to him, and the scores were tight at the end. But that could have been that that could that silly mistake really changed. It could have changed my life if I had beaten him, you know. But like that's just the way it works, you know. It's all gonna be in the book. I'm, <laughs> I'm writing the book at the moment, uh, uh, but it's um, and I've finished my part of the book. But you now I'm, I'm I'm looking for for pub, for publishers, and uh, and while I'm. Uh, uh, there's a, a guy also doing a, a documentary on me, which been take it's taken a while to do it. He's 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 coming and going, and because he's in the states, and he's uh, he's on his own, he doesn't have any backers. It's it's all when he has time to do it, you know. So, um, any publishers out there? Uh, Andy's got contacts. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Andy put me in touch with a few of them. Uh, I don't think I'm as famous as Andy though, and so I think that's when, that's one of the big problems for me, you know. That's the way. And one of your highest profile nights on Sky Sports box office against Amir Khan, and yeah. that was off the back of the the Prescott loss. What was your approach going into that fight, Oshin? What were you? I was pretty confident going into it. It's the worst night of my life. I hate I hate the the actual night, and I, I don't particularly like talking about it here. But um, the it's uh, I was confident going in. I I always thought I either could get Khan at the very best of times or the very worst of times, and I don't even know what time I got him in because. I broke my leg in the first round, you know, and like an agent, then I like, kept on getting up. Like when you see, you see on the football pitch, and lads get tapped, and they stay down, and they milk it, and they'll get carted out of the ring. But I just felt like I, all my friends would come over from from Dublin and from all over Ireland, and uh, just to see because I, I I'd won my Irish title at that stage, and I won an American title, and so I was I was kind of on my way up, you know, myself, but. Uh, and obviously this was the this was the pinnacle then, and uh, ended up uh, just break. He hit me with a good a good short right hand. It wouldn't have been something that would put would have put me down uh, uh, normally. But I remember a strange sensation, my, my, as if you were going over your ankle kind of thing. But I went over my ankle, and then I felt felt my leg fold underneath. That I was going, oh god! And I heard a crack. I was going, oh, this is messy now, you know. So I, I, you, I if you see the video, I, I try, I. Climb back up the the the, the ring, you know, uh, up the ropes, and uh, and sure, you have a broken leg. You can't even balance on that, and that was my guiding leg, my my left leg, you know. So any time I took a step to him, I was falling. And actually, I don't even think he hit me much after that. But any time I went to go from which I, I was always attacking anyway. But the minute I just took took a foot down, I just fall over, you know. So it was it was a horrible night because people then and you can understand people who then saw you if that was the first time they ever saw you fighting, like they, they just ah he was crap, you know. So that was that was ups, upsetting for me. Sure, even even today when I even talk talk about that uh, that fight, it still upsets me, you know, because most people didn't even hear. Like, it was a big deal. Uh, in the newspapers and in, on radio and TV, up to the up to the fight, they, were, they even asked me on the the late late before the fight. But it was uh, like it was the week before the fight. I was going, well, I said, no, I can't can't interrupt me training and my, and my, and and uh, the 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 preparation for 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 TV stuff. So uh, ended up, um, but after the fight, then 
like so there was loads of headlines before the fight and then after the fight even even with people knowing that the the leg broke and especially uh, with his uh, his promotion team and all that they didn't want it to be anything except for Cam Batters Fagan you know so that was that was upsetting for me you know but uh, that's the way it goes you know I was uh, one of your best performers even though you didn't get the result mm. It was a very close fight, and you could you could have got it, couldn't you, against Paulie Spadafora? Spadafora, yeah, man. Was yeah. Like people, yeah. that's like you're going in there. Like at the time, he was undefeated. He was, yeah, forty and yeah. or something, wasn't he? Yeah, he's yeah. Known, he uh, gave Floyd Mayweather a going over and sparring allegedly. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, I, I watched he was that. Seriously, he's a skillful fighter. Yeah. Really yeah. skillful, yeah. Well, it really was. And yeah, I remember. I'm sure I talked to you after the fight. That was the first time I think we we met uh, in person, didn't we? Um, and. Uh, but yeah, going into that fight, I was quite confident going into that fight too, and uh, and it was a split decision, which was unfortunate for me. But it was on his on his card and on his promotion and all that, so kind of knew that that if it was gonna go that way. And as, as soon as they said split decision, uh, I said, ah, here we go again, you know. Yeah. So it was a shame, but uh, yeah, I thought I did quite well in that one as well. Like for for somebody who's who just wasn't the boxer. And to give world champions a, a go, you know, I suppose that's all I can I, I can hope for. But uh, but I thought that uh, it was just a little bit. Uh, I, I never had that signature win. Do you know what I mean? Like so. But for someone who started off late with yeah. no experience to be in the ring with the likes of Chavez, yeah, Badafour, I can. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good resume, isn't it? Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, fought yeah. all over. Yeah, you know. Yeah, all over America, Ireland, England. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I was, I'm, I'm, I was happy with the career, and then after after the career, um, the boxing career, then I got into a job in boxing as well. So it's really high, really, really saved me life. I, I know I joked about that earlier on, but really did. It was a it's a fantastic sport, and one that if kids uh, get into, they, it can do so much for their confidence. You know yourself, Andy. You know, um, so it's, it's a fantastic sport. What about we? Like, it's tough, obviously, for you talking there about the night you fought Cam. Yeah. What about the the best memories in the ring? Um, I think winning my Irish title was probably my my favourite night. Uh, I fought Jeff Thomas, who was was a pretty skilled operator. He was um, he's he was only recently on the on the prize fighter, and he had a, a great knockout that night. Uh, he didn't he didn't win the prize fighter, but he was always a. Oh, uh, pretty pretty good uh, boxer, really nicely skilled boxer. But I just wouldn't take my foot off the pedal at, at all that night. I I, uh, I box really box really well, and, and as I always say, I'm not a, a boxer, but I just scrapped. And I I, I remember him spitting out his gum shield loads of times because he knew that I just kept on coming. I was throwing over 100 punches around, and that was my thing, just to kind of <laughs> wear him out, you know, death by 100 cuts kind of thing, you know. So. Uh, I just keep on coming and uh, I didn't really care that he was throwing some good shots back and uh, that's just my that's just how I roll kind of thing you know what would it have been like for friends and family who had never seen your fight because they would have heard about your fight in America your first 11 fights were in the US so yeah. when you when you come home to fight they've never seen you yeah, yeah. probably didn't know what what to expect and that's it you know um, I, I had uh, uh, a couple of uh, fights with um, Port Marnock, uh, but it was just to keep fit for football. So I had, in the space of six years, I had three fights, and it was only just to make money because I was a football footballer. And he just says, "Oh, well, you just we know you're quite popular in the area. Just go in there." So went down and I fought somebody else who, other guys who weren't weren't uh, uh, boxers either, really. And uh, so I always had a always had an interest in boxing. But I just, uh, I just, I just could never have told myself, told myself as a boxer at all, you know. But when my, when my friends and family start, like I would still have emailed people. So when I, when I emailed people about my debut, was saying, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm boxing as a professional. Everybody, most, most of the lads just thought I was messing, and other lads were saying, you're gonna get killed. Like, <laughs> what are you doing? Like, so, and I understood all that, you know. But uh, I said, yeah, well, this is just something I have to do, you know. And then when I went, ho- came home. That was the the best thing about it was that everybody came to actually see, see me. And it was in the national stage, and we couldn't ask for a better better spot to actually show what you're all about. Then you know, so I was, I was delighted with that. And it was great to actually get the win, and uh, and then we had a great party then afterwards, and 
Yeah, and it's great all the time. Knocked out another fella. Huh? <laughs> and, then, and then you knocked out another baseball fella. <laughs> <laughs> and you beat your record for the keg stand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. So five years retired now, mm. Oshin, and you're heavily involved in coaching. Is that the future plans or what, what yeah. do you have in store now, do you think? Yeah, uh, as, as, as long as this job goes on, I'm, I'm happy to stay in it. It's a, it's a great job, you know, it's just... Uh, uh, I'm uh, like looking after looking after kids. Like I didn't, I never thought I'd get a, as good a job as my job as a PE teacher back in the states. And then when I jumped into this job, I was going, "Oh, this is even better." Even this is kind of like being a mobile PE teacher, but in, involved in my my in boxing, which is the the sport that I wanted to be involved in most. And so, say, uh, I, I, you couldn't ask for a better job. Just hoping that the funding funding keeps on going. I'm sure, why why wouldn't it? You know, it's it's our most uh, successful Olympic sport. So I, I presume that the that uh, funding will always be there. And we work with the uh, working class kids and. Uh, we're the ones that keep everybody else on the straight and narrow, basically, as, as far as I can, as far as I can tell, you know. Mm. And we'll get on to the next generation of Irish fighters. Jason Quigley is fighting this week, but we should touch on last weekend. Andy, you were, you were in London. Yeah. Good show. I, yeah, it was a good show. Good fights. Good performances from obviously Dubois. I thought it was, like showed a lot to me. I I didn't think beyond his years, like maturity. Yeah, I didn't think he was that good, but he was devastating, and he was he. He was menacing, you know. He was methodical, didn't get shaken. Like, and what was supposed to be a test for him, but everyone was, and people were going back and forth who they, who was going to win. It looked quite easy, didn't he? You know, he just walked through him and was stuck, stuck to his job. And I tell you, there was just some power he was thrown. Like, you could, I was, I was like as close to the ring as we are here, and you could just hear the shots. And <laughs> some of them, some of them, take a lot of beating. Some yeah. of them were just glancing yeah. shots, and they were still hurting. Yeah. Like the one that put Gorman down, even it was top of the head, it didn't really land that flush. But like I don't know, you look at him now, you have to say like, where, like where would you put him now in, in terms of his standards? It's difficult because he's young. He's only young. What's he? Twenty, twenty-one. What do you do with him if you're <laughs> Frank Warren? I think you. I think I don't know. The, the thing is, there are, there's like a you know you could go around with some of the guys who are not that good yet, you know, but. Like, I tell you, it'd take a very good fighter to beat him, wouldn't it, you know? It'd take a very good boxer to beat him, because he's so big as well, and he's he's not... He's quite fast, too. Like, yeah. they were to all the talk was that it was going to be Gorman's speed versus his power, but this, there was not much... There was The speed was equal, if anything. It'd be hard in this day and age, though, the way the boxing landscape is now, that you can't give him those guinea fights anymore yeah. because people there's so much pressure See, the thing is if you say the fight with the fight with him and Joe Joyce it seems like a natural one yeah and to then the winner that can step up to the, to, to the next stage but would it could be the end like if you look at the performance of Jennings and Joyce you would favour Dubois now wouldn't you you'd favour Dubois in that fight but so Dubois wins the fight and that's the end of Joe Joyce and then but in, in, in beating Joyce, you're going to take a lot of heavy shots too. So Dubois, Dubois being 21 years old, I could have really shortened his career or hurt his career, and he might even get he might even get knocked out in the fight. Who knows? Yeah. So like putting the, being Frank, from Frank Warren's shoes, you couldn't put them together. I wouldn't put them together anyway at this stage. It's just it's, it's exciting, exciting, exciting yeah. prospect. It's like. quite the yeah. company he was in in the ring beforehand. When you looked around, you looked current. Champions and then former champions uh, standing he, he, around. Ricky Hatt and Frank yeah, Bruno was in there. Really exciting. When, Tyson Fury. To watch that fight and like no, Nathan Gorman fought well. He put up a good show. Like he just, I think when he was in there, he realised he was in with a bigger, more kind of imposing figure. Like and he had to, he couldn't take the initiative in any way, and he had to just be reactionary and everything. <laughs> uh, he probably kicked himself for not. Being a bit more proactive in terms of double jabbing and giving Gorm, I uh, giving Dubois more to think about, but it's very impressive. Very impressive with Dubois, yeah. Mm. And there seemed to be a muted enough reaction to Joe Joyce's performance, and yet, like, what, what was I'm, you? How were you? How did you score it? What were you? How, what were you seeing it? Well, with the point deduction, I'd say three points or so to Joyce or something like yeah. that. But like. Brian James is a good fighter, and Joe Joyce is still quite a novice in the pros. So I think it's a good. Perfectly good performance, and you can see he's trying to adapt to boot style of things. He's faster hands, trying to be a bit more. Less the thing is with Joyce, I don't know. Cutting. 
I don't know if he has the coordination or kind of I don't know he was getting hit a lot as well he took he a nasty body shot lot. in the first yeah and he never I don't think he ever could recover from yeah. that and Which, Jennings Jennings was good like and yeah. they felt agreed that they didn't get a decision and you could I thought watching it I wasn't scoring but I thought it was a close fight and I thought maybe do you still talk to Booth yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and how, how does he think, think that I is? didn't talk to him after the fight I heard his comments saying that no he did say to me it's a good learning fight he just I okay. mouthed, it, mouthed it for me from the ring he's a good learning and it will, it will be a good learning fight because he up to this point he's been able to walk into range and just blast people up you know beat them up and hit them with his heavy shots and eventually they'll get out of it. he'll take one or two on the way in but it, eventually they, they check out and now he realised that uh, well, as he steps to the level, he won't be able just to walk in and not do anything yeah. in the process. He's going to have to fade, he, like, uh, jab, and, like... It's a good chin, though. He took a lot of shots, but you can't keep doing that. Yeah. You can't keep doing that. And what, what, I, what I think now is that after, after seeing what Jens did, other guys will be infused to fight him. You know, they're, they're, they're not going to be afraid, even though he is a big puncher or whatever. He's not... There's enough holes there that people will want to fight him now. Mm. So it could be it could be a blessing in disguise to him as well that he will, might get an opportunity against one of the bigger guys. Yeah. I think Manuel Char is the is the talk for Joe Joyce, which would be a good stepping stone again. And he's you know this time next year he could be right in the picture for a yeah. for well, proper shot. He, he, like they got to keep moving him because he's 33. Yeah, and he's an Olympic silver medalist, so he's got to keep. He's like compared to what's complete, even though they're at similar similar progression in professional career, they're, they're different. To different, on different trajectories, I guess. Yeah. You mentioned it in your tweet. Uh, Liam Williams very impressed with him. Yeah, very good. Like mm. it, he was always going to win that fight, but it was how he went about it, and just his general improvement since uh, joining up with the Ingles, really. Um, and the move up in weight, I think, is yeah. suiting him as well. And he's been mentioning Golovkin, and that's a fight I'd actually like to see. I'd like to see that. Too. Yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing that fight. Mm. Do you watch any of the fights of the weekend? I didn't see them. Did you see Amir Khan? I saw, I saw bit, bits I can. Yeah, I only saw that. <laughs> Somebody took a, a, a video of it and it was, it was upside down. So it was, <laughs> it was on my head watching it. Yeah, but yeah, he he looked impressive. But like he, the Dibs, Dibs was just too small, you know. Mm, it was and that. Yeah, that was. But like in fairness, and I know he, he mentioned it too. That can can went up to take on Golovkin. Like that's that was two or three weights Canelo, heavier. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, Canelo. Yeah, yeah. he showed he showed flashes of speed. Like his speed is incredible now. Against to say, yeah. against. Davis, is, yeah, is it, like, it was a, a yeah. no fight. Was it was a misnomer? So weird. It'd be interesting to see what he does next. He could mm. probably keep doing these exhibitions. He can get away with them. Fights, yeah. make Why not? Um, Fury, Fury, Fury as well. Yeah, yeah. Thought he looked okay. Sammy Peters still around. Sammy Peters looked dangerous as well early on in the fight. Like, but towards the end, he knew that he wasn't going to get to Fury. I think he was trying to get disqualified. He was hitting low repeatedly, back of the head, even hitting after the break. So, but the whole thing was, you know, it is, I don't know, it's, it's in Jeddah, they're probably throwing tons of money at it, and these guys can have fights over there and get well paid, and why wouldn't you if, you, if you're a boxer, but, I don't know, it's pretty, it's not really... Where's he then, in terms of, like, with Joffrey, yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking, like... Would he be more got skillful than, than uh, Tyson? Mm. Skill, skilled as Tyson, would he? He's not, I don't know, he's, he's kind of got a... Kind of developed that style, and they've talked about him trying to be more aggressive, mm. but he's still reverting back to the type where he's moving around the ring and a little bit uncoordinated with his with his hands a little bit. You know, he's kind of disconnected, but he's still only young and like he's been in there now with Parker and yeah. the Bulgarian what's his name? Pulev. Pulev. So like that's big company to be mixing isn't it? that's world level like and he's still like he's only 22 yeah. 3 I think he's 23 yeah, yeah well, so yeah he's got plenty like, to there's plenty of time for him so those type of fights wouldn't be bad either you mm. know to see those guys fight each other wouldn't be bad what do you think yeah like there is like, when you look at you got the there big, is, three, obviously you got the yeah. big 3 and you reason the big 4 he's, let's he's, make the big 4 he's yeah the biggest of them all yeah we got the big 4 and then you've got you got these guys, you know. Even these two, like Nathan Gorman's not out of it yet. He come back. He will come back. I think he's not like, not completely out of that. That lower second the second tier. Not once on low level, but second tier. The war, Joyce. British boxing top ten. Yeah, it's mm. never been deeper. Like yeah, it's good. And like Huey is in. Huey's in there with Joyce and and the war at the moment. So maybe slightly ahead of them because of this company he's been in been in with, and he's building up building up a lot of experience. So. Those, those wouldn't be three bad fights Joyce Dubois and Huey 
eventually to happen. Yeah, and in Jeddah, Prince Patel lost. I'm sure a lot of people were devastated to, to see that. <laughs> and um, big news out of the Frank Warren stable, Anthony Yard. There was a lot of uh, confusion around the Canelo fight. I think they're actually still negotiating that fight. So if that does come together, uh, Anthony Yard's going to be given a lot of money to step aside, basically. So that fight's on, though, as things stand for August. And fair play to Anthony Yard. It's a huge step up, though, from the competition he's been in with. Yeah, but sometimes I think... Sometimes it's... Like you know, like you know the way the normal you think you you go for your career and wherever your opponent they, your opponent improves, and then you step up and you have to go like whatever maybe you know if we're this side you or in England you'd be British European whatever well, you know that kind of yeah. is, but by the time you get to that world title fight you've had so many hard fights you know s s competitive fights on the way that you're not as good as you could be whereas if, sometimes where you can take it like. Someone who's talented like Anthony Yard and just put them in that kind of, put them at that level, and and they're fresh. Mm. Then it, it kind of works in their favour as well. You know, you, your talent dictates at, at how fast you should move. You know, how fast you can move through the ranks, and it might be a big, big like it's even if if even if he did go through all those progressions and fought steadily better for opponents, he might not beat Kovalev. Like it's yeah. it's an interesting fight, isn't it? Because that's what Boazzi's doing. He is going the conventional route through the through the ranks, and they're always going to be contemporaries. They're always going to be talked about in the same breath. So hopefully they fight at some stage, but they're going separate paths for the time being. Uh, we should get into the Irish side of things. Unfortunately, Ray Moylet was in last time we were here, and that fight never actually came together, which is a shame. Yeah, I uh, heard Larry Fry's had a good win, come from behind. Got up. It's always entertaining. Yeah, I wonder was Ray yeah. watching that fight thinking, get up, Larry, yeah. <laughs> I want to fight you. So that fight's, that fight's still there for them to happen next. Um, Ray had some visa issues, so we'll get that sorted. Um, what else is going on in the Irish scene at the moment? Jason Quigley this Jason week, Quigley, yeah. uh, Torino Johnson, which is a, a decent step up from a good test. Um, Johnson's a good opponent for him. Johnson is a good, good opponent, kind of not so mobile stationary but experienced been in, been in with some big guys and um, will move Jason nicely I think yeah Jason's I wonder if he's still with uh, Golden Boy he's with Golden Boy yeah and Dominic Ingle is training know, him uh, okay. is the Maratha fight a possibility now because he has the belt back it's back on the cards yeah because that was heavily mooted he beat uh, Brandt 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 Brand, yeah. yeah which I, I, can, I was yeah. surprised by because I watched the first fight and Brand. Even the, even the like he stopped him in the second round, didn't yeah. he? And, and it was look 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 mad. Like it looked yeah. like the quality of the punches they were throwing looked look, look, didn't look great, and they both look exhausted after two rounds. So yeah. yeah, that's that's a good route for Jason to go if he, if if he can get it. I think everyone every good. middleweight in the world is going to be trying to get to Murata. Yeah, you yeah, have really. to go over there, do you? Yeah, yeah, probably have to go over there. Yeah, which I don't think Jason would have any fear yeah, doing. Probably not. And uh, Luke Keeler on the middleweight scene, there was talk of Rosado, it's actually going to be Arias. Yeah, it's a good fight, Rosado. isn't it? And it, it's a probably, yeah. it's a tougher opponent, just probably not quite as big a name. But yeah. what, a, like, what a fight, great clash of styles. Yeah, it's, tough, it's a tough fight, like you said, a tougher fight than Rosado. <laughs> not a big name, but he's been in with Jacobs, and he's, he's, he's below world level, like he's, he's, he's knocking on the door, so it's a good fight for Luke, or for Pell Luke up right, right in the mix. Mm. And... We're talk always talking about promotional battles and head-to-heads and Frank Warren and Eddie Hearn literally head-to-head -head at the O2 one week after the other. So Eddie Hearn's bringing a heavyweight show of his own, mm. headlined by White What Rebus. do you think about this Rebus fight? I think it's a 50-50. It's dangerous, isn't it? Yeah. It's a dangerous Real fight. Dangerous, yeah. 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 I'd give White the edge, but I don't know why he's taking this when yeah. he has... The look what Rebus did to Jennings and look what Jennings, not did to, but how he made Joyce look, you know? It's, I'll show you that it's a dangerous fight. I was talking to... Jimmy Tibbs, Mark Tibbs' father, um, White's coach, and I was saying, like, he was, we were agreeing on it. He said, this is a dangerous, dangerous fight, and every time he goes into that ring, he's rolling the dice. And he was saying, like, I would have liked Dillian to take an easy fight, but apparently this is the fight Dillian White wants. So. It's, yeah, it's funny. He's the kind of fighter that goes to the level of his opponent. So when he fought yeah. Hellenius or Dave Allen, he was sort of just plodding along. But when he's up against the likes of a Joe Parker or someone like that, he mm. really ups his game and... Yeah. He's hoping for something like that, and he's headlining on Sky Sports box office. And there haven't been that many pay per views this year, so this is a big showcase for him. You guys are gonna get the pay per view? Hmm? You're gonna pay for the pay away. I don't know. Well, can I find a bar in Dubrovnik? Gonna, <laughs> how do you convince a barman in Dubrovnik? Oh, get the fight in! Yeah, he's <laughs> he's a big bus of us arriving to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we've got the Dave Darby as well with the Price and Allen. Yeah. yeah, but like in terms of Dillian White, even if he finds the going tough at times, 
he has the ability to just get his opponent out of there. Yeah, and he got hard, and he'll, yeah. he'll dig out something. I like watching him. He's a him. tough boy, yeah, isn't he? Yeah. He really is. Like, he'll keep on going. Yeah. But it would be awful if he was to lose and then just go back down the ladder. Yeah, yeah. Who's the call for the Dave, Dave Darby? It's tough on the call, isn't it? Uh, Price. <laughs> Price, you think, yeah. Do you think? I think Price will blast him. I'm leaning more towards Alan just on form, but yeah. I answer. Momentum on form, yeah. I don't know. Because I was at the Park of White fight, actually, and uh, Alan was fighting uh, Nick Webb. And Webb was just boxing his head off for three rounds or whatever, and then one right hand from Alan, that was it. So he's capable of that. I know, but he, he's, he's on momentum, but like he's beaten that guy. What's that guy from Australia? Lucas Brown. Lucas Brown, like, that's... Oh, man. Mm. I think anybody at this table could be Lucas Brown. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about that. Tell it <laughs> Uh, Chisora Spilke on the undercard as well. I fancy yeah. Spilke in that one. He might be fresh. He's taken a couple of big losses too, hasn't he, Spilke? Like, so he might be fresher. Chisora still going. He's wonder why. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. That, he's always in good fights, except the last one. I see that the the guy who he beat in the last fight, um, Kazi, Kashi, Kazi, he was in training and sparring with him. So okay. Yeah, it's good, good preparation. I like Delboy. I like Chisora. But I would like to see him. Be, he has to put in a good performance this time. Yeah. If he's, you know, if he's going to win and if he's going to continue boxing. And he is. He's the ultimate case of what I was just saying about White. There, if he's fighting a, a good opponent, he really gets his teeth stuck into it. But mm. whether Spilk is that guy, I'm not sure. Like, mm. he might just go through the motions, and it could be a loss for him. He just he has to keep winning if he wants another big payday. Basically, the big fight of the weekend is probably Thurman Pacquiao. Yeah. And it's been it's a fifty fifty with the bookies. I personally think Thurman's going to win this. Do you think so? Easy. Have you seen enough in Pacquiao? Like, you think Pacquiao's... I think it's a very enough. bad luck for boxing if Pacquiao beats Thurman. It, with Thurman's in his prime and was the guy when he got injured. I know, but he's been out a while. He's not... No, has he been... Yeah, no, I just think... it, it would fought be, Lopez, isn't he? Yeah, and even... But he didn't look good enough. Yeah. Fight. But that's not a bad thing, though. No, after two years out... But it seems to me, I don't know, with this fight... Like, I was looking at Thurman and he looked very heavy... And like rec up to recently, like, and it looks like he's just coming down right at the end in the last week or two that in terms of his weight. And that can hurt people. Yeah, they? I don't know. He is a big welterweight. Yeah, well. him and Spence would I be. I don't the know who 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 to favour in that fight. Mm. Yeah, that's a tough one. I don't really know either. Pacquiao is just so quick and sharp, and even even in the older age, with his elder elder age, he's just quick and sharp, and he's just powerful. Live with the volume, you know. Dynamic, you know. Yeah, can Furman live with that volume yeah, of yeah, punching? Yeah, that's the only thing does like to be. Yeah, he's quite pensive. He'll move around, likes to like assess what he's doing, then attack in the fast burst. But Pacquiao will be in our bouncing yeah, you know, all the time. Yeah. yeah, he's never been found wanting yet, though, Thurman. Yeah, I know. Into these big tests, he's always passing. He's smart. Well, he's smart in the ring. I don't know if he's that smart. Have you seen some of the quotes and stuff he's been saying about? I don't know. Seems like the fame has gone to his head a bit. Right. And uh, on the undercard of that fight, Caleb Plant is uh, defending the super middleweight title. Did you see this tweet that PBC put out over the weekend? Oh, so yeah. It was a poll of the best super middleweights. Oh, yeah. They left Callum Smith out of it. I know, it's just trolling now, isn't it? Yeah. Do you think? It has to be. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it's obviously company man. Like, he's on a different, different platform. But it, it did more for the tweet than anything by not having Callum in there, didn't it? Mm. Yeah, I suppose a lot of people did. Here we it. are talking about it. Yeah, 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 it worked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I don't know if that was the goal, but that this uh, turned out anyway. Um, last but not least, uh, we should have a word for the great Pernell Whitaker, Andy, who passed yeah. yeah. away on Monday. Yeah. An all-time great. An all-time great, yeah. Uh, did you know No, I met him. Well, I was in his company a couple of times, yeah. yeah. And what a I watched a lot of him. Was incredible, watched a lot of him growing up and when I was with Emmanuel and... I mean, work with him in the, for the Olympics and stuff like that, so yeah. Great, great fighter, yeah. wasn't he? Yeah. He was meant to be at the, he was, he was due to be at the Thurman Pacquiao was he? fight in Vegas this weekend. Well, he's a genius, like he was the, he was the byword for de good defence. Yeah, he's, always always, the, he's, the go, yeah. he's the go to guy. You like. actually, I think you referenced him a couple of weeks ago in relation to Billy Joe. Billy Joe, yeah. Cause right. If you're defending well, you're Pernell Whitaker, that's, what, that's the ultimate goal, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, and yeah. It's a sad loss for boxing, but he achieved everything, I suppose, you can, yeah. can in the game, you know. Four division champion. Mm. It was incredible. Oh, he, was, he was so smart and, and so evasive. Like, I'd, only, I'd only ever seen maybe Ali do the head, the head movement stuff, like, 
like uh, Winnegar used to do and he just used to spin on that spin on the time kind of thing you know it was just incredible and what a fire uh, last word to you Oshin thanks William for coming in thank you very much so Andy, look forward to the book yeah look forward thank to the you book very much. you've given us a, a few tales there <laughs> there's a few alright yeah, yeah. <laughs> thanks guys and, uh, thanks to producer Tom for putting the show together we'll be back next week to react to the fights from this weekend until then it's goodbye from us <laughs>